everybody. We're back after a, over a month, almost two. Uh, just because of how things are going, this is the finale of Call of Cthulhu, the Nightmare Society. <clears throat> two of the characters have died already, so it just makes sense to end it. <laughs> um, just a couple announcements before we begin. December 16th, 2020 at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We're doing a Gremlins-inspired one-shot for Christmas. So our Beneath the Tide group, uh, we're all, they're all playing the Mogwai after they've eaten past midnight. So it's not a, they're not playing the good guys, they're playing the Gremlins themselves. Uh, and it's set during the events of the first movie, so if you've seen the first Gremlins, you know what to expect. Uh, I created the RPG system myself we'll be using. It's like two pages, and it, you have two stats. Uh, your power stat, which like determines like you're scratching people and stuff and attacking <laughs> people. And then your Gremlin stat. Which is all based around if you can successfully do gremlin stuff, like sabotaging chairlifts and launching old ladies at windows. And if you've seen the movie, you know that reference. Um, <clears throat> if you haven't seen the movie, it's a perfect Christmas movie. Um, they're really great. Oh, they're so good. Yeah. Never seen it. It's so oh. good. It's so good. Yo, yeah, there is some like weird racist shit, oh, that's but right. it's very good. Yeah, yeah. it's like. Um, yeah, like weird '80s Orientalism, you know, similar to Big Trouble in Little China, but gotcha. yeah. But it's directed by Chris Columbus. Yeah, so it's a good time. The second one, terrible, but also a very no. good time. But also a very good time. I ag- I agree that the I, the second one is very good. <laughs> the gremlin in the suit and glasses, so good. <laughs> What's not to love? Um, but. That's our Christmas one shot, uh, and then uh, as always, around the week of Christmas, we take the entire week off uh, and go from there. Uh, again, this is the finale of Call of Cthulhu. I don't know what we're doing next after this, but it'll be a couple week break to kind of figure out what the fuck we're doing uh, and to just cast some people because unfortunately, we are down someone, as you can tell. So that's a bummer, but you can see them in Soldiers of Lich Queen. That we just came back to today. Oh man, so much fun. Um, and you can see some of us play the new subclasses released in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything in that game, so come check that out. Um, yeah, that's it for announcements. Also, uh, since this hasn't. No, no, it has streamed since we last did this. So never mind. Thursdays we also do Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, the new adventure module uh, for Wizards of the Co- or for DD 5e. Yes, we don't know what we're going to do next step for this. We've been tossing around some systems, maybe Star Wars. I really want to do Star Wars now, all of a sudden. But I know streams are having a rough go with Star Wars right now because of Disney. Um, yeah. Cyberpunk. Who knows? A lot of stuff. Who yeah. knows? Digimon. Bloodborne. Swyander. Yeah. Digimon. Digimon and Bloodborne. Together. Oh, that'd be so good. That'd be so well, good. Well, well, you know what? I have an idea. We'll take knives to all the books and throw them into a ring, and whichever one comes out with the least damage. Yeah. My Victorian era horror setting is based on Bloodborne, so who knows? We'll see what we do. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> Digimon and Bloodborne. I'm, I'm just imagining now. So good. Plague Doctor Mod, Digivolve 2. <laughs> Plague Doctor with a machine gun arm for no goddamn reason. Or I'm not denying that it's not that it's that's cool. I'm just reason. saying there's like some short term. Listen, I almost always have like 13 year old boy brain where I'm like, yeah, that's rad. Put flames on it. Dope. Or uh, well, maybe we'll just do an entirely new system that lets you not base anything off of an existing IP. <laughs> so who knows? Okay. It's more fun to create something out of the from the ground up, I think, too. But Anyways, we'll figure something else out. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, but let's do a recap and try to remember what happened last time. We played Call of Cthulhu and see if we all remember how to play Call of Cthulhu. Um, we'll keep into a long-term dread game. That'd be interesting to try to figure out. Um, anyways, uh, last we left off, you all were continuing your investigation on a ship known as the Mary Antoinette. Uh, ooh, we could do the Doctor Who RPG. No. Uh, back into it. Um, 
you all were exploring this cruise ship known as the Mary Antoinette on its voyage to, its maiden voyage actually, to Ireland for a wedding. And while on the cruise, things got a little weird. The ship started rusting and getting strange. Elizabeth was attacked by a tentacled entity living inside the groom-to-be. Uh, you all continued exploring the ship and were attacked by a ghoul that was trying to get into someone's room. You fought the ghoul after it almost killed Marcel, got into the room, started attacking the ghoul from the other side of the door, and found a puzzle box, and after messing around with the puzzle box, summoned an elder evil entity from another dimension that slowly began stalking down this hallway that appeared in the wall, similar to how Pinhead arrives in Hellraiser. Good movies if you haven't seen them. First one's really good. Yeah, except this thing was not hot. No. Not like the Xenobites, which no, the Xenobites I are, hot. are hot. Pretty hot. So yeah. it's Freddy Krueger. I will yeah. die on that hill. Um, <clears throat> like, I don't it's, know why you're saying like this is controversial because everyone is like, yeah. <laughs> it's charisma. He's just charismatic. That's me. all it is. <laughs> uh, best kill in the movie series is the Roach, he- Roach Hotel. Anyways. Um, this entity makes its way mm-hmm. down the hallway. Elizabeth runs out of the room as John Byrne is brutally killed by this entity before the entity disappears back into the wall. And everything goes back to normal. And as you're all kind of in this room, the door bursts open again. And in comes John, perfectly alive. I mean, I'm around the corner crying. <laughs> yeah, so you, so you see John, like, you see John actually, like, coming down the hallway and going to the room. Hey. John, you... What? What? Aren't you in there? I was just grabbing my gun. I'm ready for this fight whenever you are. I... <laughs> Lean over, look in. The only people that are in there are Marcel and Florence. I, I, oh, I can feel the gray hair starting. Oh, I can feel My hair used to be completely black before we started this. I, I, I completely understand why. What in the ever loving holy hell just happened? It has been established that I'm not the smart one. Uh, I am going to get changed out of these bloody clothes. Uh, I, and I am going to try not to think about how I watched my friend die. So, I, uh, On that note, uh, Captain, if you I, would. John, you have no recollection of dying at all. Uh, I said, did uh, the captain happen to have a um, <clears throat> twin with the same name and followed us here? Marcel is just like getting changed behind a screen and probably says, not that I'm aware of. Uh, John, please, what is the last thing that you remembered? Uh, I remember screaming, and then someone was being attacked with a tentacle, and I went to get my shotgun, and there was a lot of screaming when I, because I had to run down to the uh, storage area, Mm -hmm. and when I came back, I mean, yeah, everything was as it looks like right now. As you guys are talking, you do, like, Florence is kind of standing in one of the corners of the room, kind of just Mm. staring into the corner, unmoving. And just starts giggling. (laughs) And I believe Florence was the one holding the puzzle cube. 
Yes. So, yeah. And you just hear like wet cutting. Just. <laughs> Lawrence and doing an like, evil dead and then there's like a wet plop as something hits the floor just, and then still oh. like laughing and cutting noises uh, Mademoiselle I'm gonna turn around uh, both lips have been cut off oh yeah just revealing the bare teeth everyone loses two sanity points oof thanks Chad oh, for suggesting people lose two sanity Thanks, chat. Thanks a bunch. Don't we get to roll for sanity? Sure. Aha. Okay. 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 Oh, Come on now. Lucky. I got my big exact roll, big sanity. Whammy. God. So you're fine. Damn it. Whew. Oh, no, I didn't. I got 34. I was reading the dice wrong. Not 43. Okay. That I got good. 90. Even better. So you lose two sanity. <laughs> Thanks, chat. Thanks a uh, bunch. <clears throat> John, uh, what is... John, what'd you get? For your sanity roll. Uh, John is still trying to figure his brains out. Okay. All right. You got an extreme success. So, you only person who does, didn't like what just happened is Elizabeth. Uh, and then, uh, as Florence turns around, like both lips cut off, blood just streaming down. They're still laughing and going. <laughs> uh, what is Mademoiselle using to do this? Uh, you don't see any instruments, like no knives, nothing. And the fingernails are just so bloody, using their own like fingers to just pull their lips off. I don't like it. I don't like it. And then <sighs> rushes at you all. Perfect. Great. Like going to attack. I will use my gigantic body as a meat shield. Okay, just slams Try to you. just like grab the wrists, you know? Okay, uh, give me, because it's been a hot minute since we played this. Let's go contested strength. Hell yeah. Oh shit, that's a fail. Uh, 37, that's underneath, that's just below Florence's strength score. Just Florence. Yo, succeeds, I got a 72. And you, you know, you, you, they like, they're clawing at you and they actually yeah. scratch you across She's the just... face. Like a big <sighs> my beautiful face. gouge. Uh, you take. Roll 1d3 for damage, because unarmed. You take one point of damage, just. As she like, as Florence just like scratches you across the face. Great. The other two see this happening. What do you guys do? Florence is like screaming, lips torn off, eyes wild, and the cube is. You can still see that that puzzle cube is kind of in their one hand, and they're just like clawing mm. at more so. Hypothetically, among my doctor's implements, would I have like a sedative? Uh, roll me luck. Okay. Okay. One flip. Hard success. Hey. You have exactly one syringe with a sedative in it, like full of sedative. Okay. I'm going to attempt to. Stick it to Florence, as it were. Uh, medicine check. Can do. Thank goodness. That's something I'm actually good no, with. No need to check off your skills because this is the last case. So that is a success. Fifty-four. Right. You jam the sedative into Florence, and doesn't seem to have any effect. Ah. Uh. <laughs> that was enough to stop a charging rhino. What the hell? Still wild, yeah. eyes wild and clawing. If you knew himself. the mademoiselle better, that would not surprise you that much. Um, of course, I have junkies of patience. Perfect. Um, Captain Burn is going to try to use the gun to hit the cube out of her hand. Their okay. hand. Uh, their roll hand. me 
Roll me strength. Come on. Big money. Big money. I'm using the wrong one. Oh. There we go. Hard, <clears throat> hard success. Okay. You. Uh, and hit. Actually, you know what? Actually, the purple, the one, the purple actually will actually show you kind of, whatever. Anyways, it works anyway. <laughs> you take the gun and you just knock the cube out of Florence's hand. It doesn't make a difference. She just, now she just has two free hands to scratch with. Oh, boo. Um, You're just clawing wildly at Marcel. Can I just try to, like, choke her out to unconsciousness? <laughs> yeah, give me... Like, just kind of, like, spin her around and just, like, arm against and just... Yeah. Let's, let's go contest the strength again. Oop, All right. That's Who's going to betray me this time? That is a failure. So you just oh, I got a four. That's a... Holy cow, that's a huge success. Uh, yeah, you, I got a four. You just oh, squeeze onto Florence's neck. You're not like trying to like kill, I don't imagine. No, no, no. Uh, but she eventually, like, her eyes kind of close and she just eventually goes limp. <sighs> then down we go and on to the bed. <sighs> And her ripping her own lips off did deal damage to herself. Yeah. So I'm going to see how much that was. Two. Well. I, yeah. Uh, Are you able to uh, bandage up her face a bit? Mm -hmm. Honestly, my first instinct would be to uh, perhaps restrain her. I, I wouldn't want that popping back up unexpectedly. You do see she does have a knife on her person. Uh, I will, well. Get the knife. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I will, um, yeah, begin to uh, restrain my boss. Okay. Do you guys have rope? Maybe like some bed sheets or something. Yeah, there's like moldy, mildewy bed sheets. Mm. Oh, is my suitcase here? Yes, but it's but real, but it's yeah, yeah, real my... old. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess shit didn't go back to normal once we found the puzzle cube, so everything's still old. Mm -hmm. The captain is going to take his coat off and wrap her like a straight jacket. Wrap nice. them, sorry. Wrap them like a straight jacket. Okay. Isn't Florence a lady? Yes. yes. Yeah, it's just wrap her with a straight jacket on. Yeah, Florence Not is like late. Me. The player on, behind man. her. Yeah. Say that. I just I don't I didn't want to offend anyone or anything. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. But you straight jacket Florence up and yeah. set them on the gross bed. I will use one of my good silk ties and probably get it real dirty to help tie her up. Okay. <laughs> destroy this cube, maybe everything will go back to the way it was. Or perhaps we're trapped here forever. It's not a coin toss I care for. So, if memory serves, Captain, your room was the one that was exceptionally bad luck. Is that correct? But that's what... Yeah, hey, that's what they tell us. We like, were assigned the room number of the beast, which... It's floor 6, room 66? 666. Yes. Every elevator I've ever been on has even uh, skipped floor 13, so uh, it's odd that they would include that. Uh, John was on the seventh deck. Room 666. Mm. The room was 666. Gotcha. Well, honestly, after this, I am more willing than ever to accept that some numbers just are not worth the trouble. Um, I'm assuming we leave our benefactor here. I'm not quite sure what her exact role was. Do 
Do we just hope she gets better? Or... I doubt anyone will be getting better in this place. My concern is whether or not she is herself and if she will, is too far gone. I was going to say something, but you know what? I'm not a psychiatrist. It's not my place to say. I dabble. Could I make a psychology check when she was like coming at me? Was there any Florence left or was it just like uh, just pure go eldritch go monster? It. Go for it. Nice. Never get to use my psychology skill. This is fun. Oh, okay. So that's just like a, a menial success at a 47. There was nothing Florence about that. Well, I um, have not known the young man was there for very long. I knew her. Uh, I'm not sure if she's still there. I would say she's probably gone. Do we wish to send her to the angels, or do we wish to simply continue? I'm just saying I don't. We want safety to our backs, so far as I'm aware. We run into one of those ghouls again. I'd rather not run the risk of having a crazed lipless girl attack us on the back well i would uh not relish the idea of killing her it uh feels unsporting silly as that may sound i uh, say we leave her here maybe if we can break whatever curse has befallen the ship Perhaps Mademoiselle will return. If not, we come back. I finish her off. Fair enough. Do you... I do still have my sewing kit, but time is of the essence. Do you wish for me to attempt to reattach her um, lips? Can you really do such a thing? I think I, that may wait, best wait for now, Doctor. That's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, oath of service. Why don't we get on then? I'd rather not stay here any longer than necessary, especially if this one wakes up. You hear a, like a like clattering on the floor, like 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 little legs, just like like a rat, kind of running around the floor. Just like gun swings around instantly. You don't see a rat, hmm. but there's something kind of moving along the carpet under the bed, and it kind of goes under the bed. Oh, perfect. Very small, like maybe that big. Who's got a light? Me. I'll just toss John my lighter and, like, ready my weapon. John's gonna lean down, shotgun in one hand, and click on the lighter and have a look. Uh, there's, it looks like an insect with, like, six weird blood-covered legs. It's like a, like, also like a, it looks like a mix between, like, like a, it looks like a caterpillar, but fleshy, kind of moving under the bed towards you. It's one of Florence's lips. Yeah. John is just, Why? John's just going to stand right back up. He's just going to be like, well, I'm going to be seeing that in my nightmares for the rest of my life. And you hear this strange buzzing noise. And insects just start pouring out of Florence's mouth onto the carpet, just out, um, everyone out. Centipedes. This room is dead to me. I am so sorry, mademoiselle. See you in another life. Spiders, centipedes, 
just a waterfall, a cascade of insects onto the carpet. Just yeah, Liz, mm, Liz is Audi bouncing. Okay, did any of you take the cube or no? Um, hey, for sure didn't. Okay. Uh, the captain is going to uh, grab it with a kerchief covering it, so he's gonna like, not no skin on skin contact. Okay. And he's gonna grab it, and then he's just gonna fire twice at the floor as he's running back, trying to okay. pull away. <laughs> yeah, it's a horde of insects. I don't need to roll for that. Just like, yeah. like kind of like just scatter in the air in pieces, uh, and you close the door behind you guys and. Uh, Sting. Yeah, they don't, insects do not crawl under the door or anything. They stay in that room. Bag, bag, bag. <sighs> right. Captain, uh, would you happen to know of a fast and perhaps discreet way of uh, getting to uh, your room? Uh... Would I know a fast and discreet way of getting to my room? No. Yeah. Just the way you came. It's. I am surprised that there are no sort of like servants' passages in the boat. Je- you know, bulkheads, uh, Jeffrey's tubes, something. Yeah. There's uh, yeah. There's there, there is a dumb is, waiter at the end of the hall, though. This isn't an estate like you fancy people have. You need as much space as possible for as, lo- as much as possible. That's sweet. Ethan, I do oh, not have an cute. estate. That's I am cute. employed by one. That is a huge difference. Yeah. Don't live on one. Yeah, at the, end and... of the, at the end of the quarter, it was like one of those like, dumb waiters, and it's kind of near uh, a drop-off. Like, not a drop-off. Like, you they put food in it, just kind of lift it up and down. Uh, and then, as you guys kind of, kind of wandered on this hall... Uh, near the grand staircase mm-hmm. uh, are one of those like uh, old school elevators so they had to like pull open and then uh, pull close with like the grate in front of it and the, and the light in the elevator is on mm. uh, and the elevator is immaculate it's not rusted or ruined whatsoever here's the question do you trust these newfangled electrical contraptions well, if it were a normal day, I would say yes, the ones of the day are extremely skilled with at work. However, considering everything around us seems to go, hell in the handbasket seems generous. This thing why is don't... either. Yeah, why, why don't we go analog this time? Yes, uh... the. Um... Elevator is either a safe harbor in a storm or it is a trap. Um, as you're looking, as, oh, what's up? I was gonna say, as they're walking, too, uh, the captain would have been looking for some sort of bag or some way to carry the cube without it being like in his pocket, just like mm. indirectly, you know. Okay, uh, or like, even like a piece of fabric that he could wrap it in and then put it on the end of a stick and just carry it like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, give me a luck check. Let's see if you can actually find something like that. You could have the um, cane casing for my sword cane. Oh, uh, that is a success. Um, there's a trolley cart nearby that has like linens on it. But the linens are all obviously moldy and mildewy. Yeah. He's gonna take the freshest piece he can find, and okay. the cane casing, and turn it into like a little carrying case. Okay. Uh, as you all are like looking at that elevator and kind of deciding against it, why don't everybody just give me spot hidden checks? Ooh. Ew. There's no way this could go bad. <sighs> that is a oh. Spot hidden. Eh. Ooh, actually a success. Okay. Same. Okay. How'd John do? Success. Okay. The elevator looks immaculate. Nothing wrong with it. But the walls look like they're a little wet. Uh, Uh -uh. And the elevator looks like it might be expanding 
and shrinking a little bit. Like, <clears throat> kind of like in rhythm. You kind of notice in rhythm with your breathing. Yeah. Marcel takes like a deep drag off of his cigarette, like stares at the cigarette to make sure it's not one of the laced ones. It's not. Right. <laughs> and then says, um, does anyone else see the elevator breathing or have I lost my mind? I wouldn't discount that possibility, <sighs> but I do also see that. So either it's breathing or we're having shared delusion with the two. At this point, Bears. it could be either or. So I would, let's just avoid the, the more evidence is pointing to avoiding this contraption over yeah. here. Although me as a human being really wants to crawl in that dumb waiter. Like, like as just a player, I'm just like, yeah, no. how, how big is the dumb waiter exactly? Standard dumb waiter size, like a big enough for like someone to, eat. to get into it comfortably. You'd have to like crawl up into a ball. Yeah, it'd be a I, tough, it'd be a tight fit for any adult. Yeah, right. Marcel's a big boy. Florence uh, probably could have um, somewhat. Yeah. Well, how? If we are, uh, are we in agreement that the dumb waiter is the optimal solution here? I don't like the idea of one of us being alone in the dark, being lowered down. You're also near the grand staircase. The grand staircase is near the elevator. Um, but as you're all deciding, uh, oh. the uh, elevator light kind of blinks off for a second and blinks back <laughs> on, and there's a there's like a person standing on the elevator in like. Uh, employee clothes on the ship, like the red vest, the white undershirt, the black tie, hair kind of coming back, and they're holding um, a silver platter with a cloche on top. It's like a little mm -hmm. cover. Yeah. Um, and it opens up, and they go, oh, hello. Uh, how are you enjoying your evening on the ship? Fantastic. It's been an interesting evening, for sure. <sighs> Um, just a reminder, uh, that the lower decks are currently out of service. Um, there's been a little bit of an incident. Uh, the upper decks are off bounds currently as well. Uh, the wedding ceremony is currently ongoing, uh, and only guests are permitted. Um, thank you. We are, we are guests. And he's going to show the invitation that's been sitting inside his vest pocket. Uh, that's blank. Of course it is. Did we get hired by fucking ghosts? And he kind of smiles and just kind of walks forward and walks through all three of you before disappearing into a wall. Yes, we, we got hired by ghosts. We got hired by ghosts. We got hired of by ghosts. We got hired by ghosts. That would be the cherry on top. And the elevator. Of this shit the elevator. The elevator is no longer wet or breathing. Oh, that's great. But the the light... elevator is dry and not breathing, which is, I feel like, you know, normally I would not remark upon such things, but look, the elevator is no longer breathing. But the light, the light is still on. The captain is just, his head is tilted slightly, he's frozen, he's just unsure of what's just happened. He's gonna, is, is the piece of paper in his hand blank? Yeah. He's gonna crumple it up and throw it down the hall. Okay. Just... I'm gonna check mine. Yours Little invitation. isn't blank. Oh. Yours cool. says room 23. Mine says room 23. Uh, well, Liz <laughs> Lizzie wasn't invited, so she probably didn't have one. But was, or her reservation was for the dead guy. So there's oh, a right. piece. There is a piece. You, you do feel something like kind of inside your clothes that wasn't there before, though. <laughs> like a piece of paper. She'll, she'll check then. Okay, it's a, it's an invitation, but it's blank as well. Um, uh, were we just it. in room twenty three? No, that was your room, wasn't it? Yeah. 
Nope, your room is room 37. So room okay, 23 cool. is on this deck. It's been so long since we've played. I have since lost my notebook. Yep, Marcel, room 37, Florence, room oh. 3, John, room 666, and Elizabeth, room 313. Well... So... I would still perhaps suggest not using the elevator, considering <laughs> what we just saw. If we were to use the dumb waiter, my suggestion would be to uh, send the captain first, as he's the one I would say that is the most heavily armed of the three of us. Well, why don't we go have a look at what this room 23 has in store for us first? <sighs> Let us I... see what fresh hell awaits. Eh? And then maybe oh. take the stairs down because that dumb waiter probably sits over quite a drop if there's still a box left inside. Who's to say the rope is not uh, in a, a similar condition? Perhaps. Why not? As much as I would love uh, to cram you into a very small box, Capitan, I uh, think perhaps we should go to room 23. Sure. Let's do that. Go to room 23. All right. Yeah. It's only a few doors down from the stairs. So, so the elevator is still well within eyesight. Okay. Still lit? Yeah. Huh. Okay. And you get to the door that says room 23. And like the rest of the, the bow to the ship and the doors, all the doors are like rotted, all rotted wood. So they're kind of like just gross and soggy. But the plaque on the door that says room 23 is mm. extremely polished and well taken care of. Weird. Hmm. Well. well, um, I will, uh, and it's just like a solid door. There's no little, like, porthole, no little peak. Not in this one. The other doors I... do. This one doesn't. Knock. You knock and your fist just kind of goes through the door. It's so rotted. And like worms and stuff kind of like cr crumble out of the wood. I would like to have a small panic attack. Okay. Yeah. Pull my hand out. The captain is going to push Marcel aside and just kick the door in. You don't kick it in. Your foot goes straight through the door. <laughs> He's just going to keep walking then. Okay, and the door just... Just like, walk through! Yeah, the door just kind of like... just It's like... The door is so wet and rotted, you can just push, pull yourself through it. It's so... just like It's like it's like walking through wet paper. It's like... Imagine like trying to like pull yourself through wet paper. That's what the door is like. The texture of wet paper. I was worried because I did not have a key, but uh, I will follow the captain. But on the inside, there are four caskets. Hmm. Huh. Wooden, actually, they're not wooden. They're like rather immaculate wooden coffins. Yeah. Each with a golden plaque on top with a name carved into the plaque. Uh, yeah. And the what captain is, would those names be, pray tell? The captain's going to turn to the other two and just be like, How much you want to put on? Those are going to be our names on there. You know, I'm. You know what, I'll, I'll, I'll freely My... admit I'm usually a betting woman, but this seems like a fairly straightforward bet. May we check the names, if there are any, on the four caskets? Uh, three of the caskets don't have any names on them. They're blank. Okay. But one of the caskets does have a name on it, and it says Florence Tudor. Well, there you go. There's... Uh, Hours. Well, perhaps if we break them, we don't have to worry about being stuffed in them. Uh, I see that from a practical level. I do not really wish to engage with uh, this grim spectacle anymore 
I mean, what should we go to see what ha is happening with the wedding ceremony? So, I would say, I'm thinking as a doctor at the moment. Ah, please. I have, at times, very rarely engaged in, uh, in surgery. Mm -hmm. And while there is exploratory surgery, you don't normally amble about the thoracic cavity looking to see if there might be uh, some ambient lung collapse as you go for the cancerous tumor. It would seem to me, if there is to be a source of all of this, it would likely be found in the one room that was fairly explicitly mentioned to be cursed. On top of that, the groom, the couple, mm. are dead. They are very, very, very dead. I would really prefer not to walk into a ghost wedding personally. But you do you. You do you. If you want to have a cake full of rattling chains and dust, that is entirely up to you. Thoughts, Captain? All this hell may be happening around us, but I'm pretty sure we're still alive in all this. Let's try and keep ourselves that way. Yeah. Um, can I, like, like, it's just like a room with four caskets in it. That's all that's in here, yeah. There's like, um, can the captain walk over to Florence's ca uh, cast? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Open. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna just like be ready if okay. like a zombie jumps okay. out, you know. You open Florence's coffin, expecting a corpse, mm. but it's empty. A very nice, like red velvet interior. Uh, and lying in the casket is a note, like a piece of parchment. Huh. The captain is going to take it and look at it. Okay. In the kitchens, you will find the answers you seek. The and then... Uh, there are like little water droplets on the parchment and the, the entire like parchment itself just reeks of uh, salt water. Seems to be a theme. I mean, you know, now that I think about it, many of the ghosts or apparitions that we've seen have been uh, servants carrying food. So that may actually be a very valid clue. Um, and how and far from the uh, kitchens are we? Uh, mm -hmm. Kitchens are down on the first deck. Or sorry, no, okay. that's no. Uh, kitchens are because first deck is like where all the poor people are. Uh, kitchens are uh, tenth deck, tenth and deck. you are all currently on the. Uh, Florence's Marcel's room, second deck. Uh, so, and there is a there is a signature in this note, and it's signed by Florence Tudor. Hmm. The captain is going to throw the other three caskets open. All right, empty, empty, empty. <laughs> right. So this would seem to revisit our. Ascendancy issue. Do we wish to go down the staircase, hopefully making as little noise as possible? Do we wish to take the elevator that we just saw breathing and spitting up a ghost? Not that or do, do we wish to go down the dumb waiter where we will be lowered 10 levels down one by one? I really, the captain is going to close one of the caskets, he's going to take his little knife out. He's just nonchalantly he's going to be like, I really would prefer walking our way down if possible. There are stairs for a reason. And he's just starting to carve a little anchor. 
into one of the caskets. So that doesn't have a name on the plate. Okay. It's then down the stairs we go. Firearms and other weaponry out. Okay. <laughs> Elizabeth takes out her tiny little derringer, <laughs> which at this point is basically a nightlight, but it's something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you all leave room 23, and as you all leave room mm-hmm. 23, you feel this prickling sensation on the back of your neck like you're being watched. And you all turn around, and the door that was there is no longer there. It's just a wall. Um, before he walks out of the room, the captain would have turned around just to the room. He just would have pointed at the one that he carved the anchor into, and he would have been like, that one's mine. It looked the most comfortable. Okay. You won't feel it. <laughs> uh, you all make your way to the stairs. Um. Yeah, completely pitch black as per everywhere else on this ship, minus the elevator. Cool. Yeah. Did, I mean, didn't did we find a flashlight in yeah. Florence's room? Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, yeah. I mean, we can just head down stealthily if possible. Okay. Everyone, make me stealth rolls. That's a hey. check you can do in Call of Cthulhu. Yeah, still. It is. This That's... is totally going to go Oh, here. great. Nope. That's a 20. Okay. A success, um, oddly enough. Hey! So the captain fails with a 36. Same. And so it's two, that's two fails, one success. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh. John and Marcel, as you walk, both of your feet kind of just break through the wood, the rotted wood, and you just... Uh, and I swear so loudly. Yeah, but not enough of a fail to kind of alert anything or cause any harm. Oof. It was not a fumble. <laughs> a fumble, yeah. But it takes you about like ten minutes to like actually like get your foot, like feet out of the the wood, the rotted wood. And you can make continue making your way downstairs. You go from you go from floor two, deck two to deck three, and down another set of stairs. Down another yeah, set of stairs. Out in front of them. Okay. After about uh, 15 minutes, because you're taking... Not 15, that's a long time. Or accurate, maybe. After about 10 minutes, uh, going down the stairs, quiet. Actually, you're going, you're going slow and quiet. So more like 20 minutes, uh, you eventually find yourselves um, facing the deck that has the kitchen on it. And as you round the corner, that smell of salt water only gets stronger mm. and stronger. And then there's a smell of like sitting water, like stagnant. Yeah. And as you round the corner, the flashlight just reflects off of water, and the entire deck is flooded. With about look, the water looks like it's maybe four and a half feet deep. and bodies are just floating in the water Mm. staff and kitchen staff skeletons like they've decomposed immensely and they're just floating in the water and it's a steady drip drip well it's a step from the medical school wards and morgues That's concerning. I've been, more, I've been more wet at home in a light rain, and the captain's just going to start walking. Uh, sadly, the uh, Miskatonic University uh, morgues are not kept up very well. Um, the water is severely cold, Mr. John Byrne. Uh, how tall are each of you? Because the water is about four and a half feet deep. Uh, she is. Da-da-da. Uh, I am. John was over six feet. I know that. Yes, yeah, so you got you got about two feet above water, so like it's kind of like up to your chest or so. Mm. I would say Liz is probably about like five six. Okay, so up to about your up to like about your upper chest. Yeah. Okay. Size oh, sixty. That's not, that's not really tall. Cool. 
four and a half feet deep, and someone's five feet tall, I'd be like... <clears throat> yeah. I'm like... Mm. Uh, Mademoiselle, do you wish to be assisted in any way? <laughs> May as well. She'll kind of clamber onto Marcel's back. Oh, it, uh, oh okay. You're yeah, just okay. Here we are. Okay. I will give the doctor a piggyback through the water. So even John's a little like just lifting the head above water. Um, and the water is incredibly cold and it's it stinks. It's stagnant. These corpses have been decaying in it for who knows how long. So like their flesh is actually kind of like sloughing off and kind of just floating in the water as well. And you're definitely like kicking into things in the water, like yeah. bits of stuff you can't see. Because uh, it's just like so dark in here, the flashlight's not really like the, the beam of light is actually not getting into. Like, at this point, the flashlight's kind of like yeah, <laughs> you, don't want, you don't want it to get wet. Um, I assume the people with guns also made if maybe have their guns above water so they don't get waterlogged. Okay. I don't think I I brought my shotgun. You know that as he's walking along, he's just gonna be like, you know, this reminds me of the time that. Uh, Crouch torpedoed one of my ships while we were crossing the Atlantic and we had a hole in the engine room. Would you believe him? We had to shut it all down and get towed. And we had to patrol that in case those crouch tried to swim through the hole. And he's just walking and talking. Okay. Totally comforting, actually. Uh, as you're all walking, uh, yeah, just more and more bodies. Like a body starts to like float out of a nearby room of this deck, of yeah. the kitchen. A body just kind of floats out of the kitchen with a cleaver in their back. They just kind of uh. float out. The cleaver is incredibly rusted beyond use. Uh, this body just kind of floats out, kind of bumps into th the three of you a little bit, and then just kind of continues its little floating down the corridor. Is there like a current? It feels like a little bit of one, yeah. Okay weird right super weird of course and you feel that little current john i'm trying to ignore it but yes yeah i don't like it okay um kitchen it's right there uh, yeah. yeah john's just gonna push his way forward and then okay uh, you will feel your way into the kitchen, um, and it looks like you'd expect a kitchen on a luxury liner to look, but incredibly, like, rusted and, uh, beyond use, uh, some, like, the rust flakes are kind of, like, floating in the water as well, so this water is incredibly, like, filthy, um, definitely not safe to drink, um, uh. and, um, on, like, the... Who has the flashlight? Not me. That would be probably the doctor. Okay, the doctor has the flashlight. Yeah. So, gun on one hand, flashlight on the other. Yeah. Okay, uh, with the flashlight, give me a spot hidden check. Ooh. Okay. And I'll say mm. because you're on, no. Because you're on Marcel's back, uh, roll two and take the lower number. Okay. <laughs> roll one. I am. It is a fail. Roll two is also a fail. Uh, lower is okay. 48. Damn. All right. All right. Is there any, like, dry spots? Like, are there any counters that are kind of above the water? Oh, quite a few, yeah. Yeah. I'll set the doctor down on a okay. counter. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's definitely a lot of black mold growing in. Oh no! I'm not gonna put her down on black mold. I'm not putting it. No, on like black you can mold. put her somewhere like where she doesn't gonna there's nice. isn't gonna be like in direct contact with okay. black mold, but there's definitely like black mold in here. Um, the captain's gonna head straight for the freezer okay. and pull those doors open first. A uh, lot of water resistance. Give me a strength roll. Success. Success. Hey. Uh, again, there's a lot of water there, so you like force it, and after about two minutes, you can get them like opened up enough to peer in. The water just starts kind of gushing into the freezer, just like, 
Uh, and then if I just, like, the, I'll say it lowers the water level by a foot and a half. Oh. Uh, and now the freezer's kind of just floated up, kind of like to the same amount as the rest of the kitchen. So you've lowered the water level by a bit. Um, so now the water is about uh, three feet deep. So safe enough, like... for, safe enough for everyone to kind of like be on their own. Can I it's... see anything now that the water's lower? Uh, yeah. Uh, a lot of corpses. More corpses than you expected. A lot of them were kind of like under the water. You don't know how many corpses I expected. Um, <laughs> there's like crabs crawling around too. Ugh. And it's like eating away on the corpses. Just like... Mm-mm. A lot of just like small little sea creatures you can see a little better now. It's kind of eating whatever they can get off of these old oh, corpses. Weird, like mouths. Yeah, like it's just, it's gross. Yeah, maybe some of them giant isopods. Yeah, it's just yeah. gross in general. It's just like I don't want to see this. <laughs> the giant isopods are cute though. They're cute. Nothing, nothing with tentacles, is there? Not yet. Uh, oh, that's huh? encouraging. The um, captain is pretty much used to it. He's just yeah. like, if there's any like cupboards, uh, oh yeah, tons. Oof. Yeah, I guess I'm just gonna maybe start opening cupboards and like looking for stuff. If there's any kind of like, yeah, just trying to see what's going on. All right, uh, you open up a cupboard and there's a little ornate black box kind of well polished and it looks like it's almost built to house the cube <sighs> covered in something. it's covered in like tentacle motifs oh. um and yeah Uh, what did you find there, Marcel? I have found a boss box. It looks like it might be um, the right size to fit the cube into it. It's uh, covered in tentacles. It's a bit of a theme. It seems so. Do I... you wish to test that fit? Uh, no, but why not? You, uh... It has a hinge to as well. The captain is just going to hold up the rod with the thingy, with the <laughs> little packet. You can uh, deal with that. I will take the little bundle. Um, and, I mean, I guess I'll, like, open the hinged lid okay. tentacle box. You open the hinged lid and... See if anything jumps uh, out at me. No. Uh, but... There is a piece of parchment shoved into the lid. Uh, that looks like it actually comes with the box itself. But oh, it's I very, found the instruction very manual. Very old, very aged. In Latin? No. Ooh. Written in a language no one understands. Ooh. It's a weird looking language. Oh. You could say it's. Is it? Out of game, it's that language that you're probably thinking of. Okay, cool, cool. cool. It's Luthagen, Rylith, or whatever it's called. Rile- cool. Whatever yeah. language Lovecraft made up. It's yeah. Platonic. Yeah. But yeah, so language um, none of you understand. It's like a, like a weird, like consonants and vowels kind of jammed together it doesn't make any yeah sense. weird symbols and shit yeah are you examining the parchment like unfolding it and uh, i will do so okay um you open unfold it and hmm. the first thing you see um is a depiction of a creature you don't recognize. Um, a massive kind of entity with little wings and a big, like, cephalopod-like head rising up out of the ocean. Um, <sighs> tentacles flailing. Yeah. 
Um, and there's a picture of the cube uh-huh. in the book. In a pattern you've never seen it done in before. Mm. And unfortunately, since nobody knows the language, they can't figure it out. Um, but there's also a picture of a very familiar object that mirror you all found at the farmstead. Mm. Of course. The what John and Marcel and Florence found. Yeah. Um, it's a strange artifact. And it shows both of these artifacts kind of in the, the picture. Because obviously mm. pictures in the instruction manual, not just writing. Uh, showing how to seal away said entity rising up out of the ocean and you get a sense to stop it, you need that mirror. Well, um, we did not bring the mirror. However, uh, it looks like it is pretty important. So if we get off this ship alive, good for us. Um, And there's actually a... uh... Let me a luck check, Marcel. Oh boy, okay. I don't think I'm super lucky. Oh yeah, coin toss. Oh, 23! Okay. Heck yeah. There's a translation, and someone's been translating to English. Ooh! And that kind of that kind of falls out, almost goes into the water and ruins it. Cool. Catch it. All right. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's literally a summoning ritual to summon an entity known as Cthulhu. Some sort of summoning ritual to summon a uh, Cthulhu fellow? Uh, it says... Bless you. It ah. says the way... No one will be able to stop the ritual because they need these two artifacts. Ah. Essentially. Um, it also mentioned... I'm making... This is just all made up. I don't know. Does it say Cthulhu like when the ritual is supposed to happen? Uh, today's date. Oh, great. Of course. Of course. Do we remember what we uh, last saw the mirror at? Your office's mantle above the fireplace. And you guys have a shard of it. Yeah. For, for some reason, I thought you guys like took that with you, but I, I was clearly mistaken on that. Yeah. Bill, put it in a fish tank full of holy water, seal the fish tank yeah, up in yeah, lead, it's, it's, drop it's, the fish it's, tank it's in the ocean. It's still at the office, yeah. It's still at the office. Um, well, uh, okay, I think we need to find a way off the ship, and we need to find a way back to the office. Uh, I do not know <clears throat> what this... There's a big, like, hit against the hull of the ship, and it kind of, like, course, rocks the whole is. ship. Just... <clears throat> okay, we get it, Cthulhu, if that is your real name. And where it hit, uh, you can just see a, a big indentation in the middle, or in the metal, just doom. So, does the ship have lifeboats? It might. Hypothetically, where might these uh, lifeboats be? On the top deck, outside. Yeah. I'm going to roll a lock check behind the scenes to see if there are lifeboats. Ooh. Um, yeah. The cat is going to lead the way to the life deck. Life boat decks. Okay. Uh, as you're waiting through the kitchen, uh, are you taking the box with you or are you leaving it there? Oh, yeah. No, I definitely think we'll take the puzzle box. Um, take the casing. I guess I'll put the puzzle box in the case. Excellent. As you put it in the case, you hear it as it locks in and you yeah. can pull it back out. Uh, and as you put it in, it the cube lights up a bit, and there's this strange, unearthly like all throughout the ship and outside of it, as a tentacle, <coughs> massive tentacle breaches uh, through uh, the hull of the ship and tries to grab Marcel. Cool. I would like to dodge. Go for it. Uh, fuck, what's my dog you just still need, You just need a successor better. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Skill, skill, skill. Okay. Oh, my God. Um. Oh, oh, my God. 
What you get? I got a 31. I needed uh, my skills at 33. <sighs> the tentacle comes out and it misses you and slams into the wall and scoops out a random corpse of, a, of like one of the staff and just rips it out of this hole in the hull. And as the hull hole is like that hole is ripped open, seawater just starts gushing in in torrents. Just like, uh, John, I need a sanity check because you just saw a big old fucking tentacle. That is a fail. Oof. Fail. I gotta check how much sanity loss Cthulhu gives you. <laughs> so much. It's a lot. It's so much. It's oh, uh, It might be multiple, oh, like, D12s okay. or something. It's a lot. Or is it Cthulhu? It's... We know, meta-wise, it's Cthulhu. Uh, what am I looking for here? Mythos, Cthulhu. Was, was he good or mythos monsters in the book? Yes. Probably under strange beings and eldritch gods. Be, 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 bear with me, everyone. There is a lot in this book. It's 449 pages. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's a beefy boy. It's a cool I, it's, The art in it is so cool. It's very good. I also love how they have a staff block for the color out of space. Mm -hmm. Wait, Put what? Do they actually? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I've like had like I've haven't even had enough time to go through the book the entirety of it. There's a lot. Uh, there's a lot to it. I, yeah. I just remember that cold air was a thing, so I wonder if there's staff for the uh Eldritch oh, here we go. air conditioner. Hmm. Great Cthulhu. Maybe. Insanity sanity loss. Sanity loss. Sanity loss. I forget how that works. I forget how sanity loss works. It's been a while. I don't remember. It's been a while. If it's a fail, it's oh, if it's success, it's the left number. It's a failure, it's the right number. Ooh, the right number is beefy. Yeah. That's not. There's no way. The the, mm -hmm. lo, the sanity loss for Cthulhu, seeing Cthulhu, is one d one hundred. I rolled three zeros, which is 100. That's all of it! John, you lose all of your sanity. Uh, what happens oh, I've been waiting for this. What happens when you lose? I gotta, I gotta look up sanity rules because I don't remember what happens. It's been a long time, so everybody who's watching, we haven't been played so in months. Long. Um, it's been Yeah. But... This I've been waiting for this. We've been facing just like physical stuff. Now one of us gets to go insane. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's not okay. you. No, it's, well, I mean, my character guy is freaking head cut off. So I, I like I'm good. <laughs> After okay. an oddly homoerotic moment with spring heel chap. Okay. Oh, weirdly sexy. Okay, okay, okay. I don't, I can't remember what happens. Oh man, I should look this up beforehand and I forgot. Okay. You're permanently and incurably insane and cease to be a player character. Well, oh. John just kind of just stands there in the water staring blankly and. Pulls out. What gun do you have with you, John? He would have the shotgun in his hands. Pulls. You have the shotgun. You're just kind of staring blank. You all kind of see just John standing in the water, mm -hmm. and then just. <sighs> Captain. Captain. I feel like Marcel honestly looks at the door but, like he's kind of expecting Don to just like walk in and just be like what's going on again uh, both of you give me spot hidden checks though when John uses the old shotgun though as you're like fleeing the lower deck of course oh yeah 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 um, okay cool yeah I got a success Fail on my end 55 no, no blood or brain matter when they did that and as that happens John just Disappears. Can I like? Can I grab him? the shotgun? Oh. Shotgun. You can do it. Damn One it. of us grab the shotgun. The shotgun wasn't real. 
Oh. Oh. It got Thanos too. No. No. Oh, John, we've been John, hired by a John ghost. was a John was a ghost, ghost. y'all. John died in that room. John's and then ghost, his ghost got driven insane. Yeah. It's Cthulhu, whatever. Uh, yeah, we're wrong. <laughs> okay. That's a I, I I just went from a ghost to a poltergeist. <laughs> uh, so you all keep the two of you just keep running. Just like through this flooding water of this ship. Mm-hmm. Uh, where are you guys headed? Top deck? Up, yes. Yeah, up. Okay. I mean, yeah, yeah. I think... So, um, the ship is just constantly flooding. Like, it's starting to sink. Um, yeah. Other and... side of the ship from where the tentacle okay. popped in, if sure. possible. And that unearthly moaning is still a cause. It's not ending. It's like... Mm-hmm. And I can't get the thing out of the thing. It's jammed in there. Okay. Um, oh, I'm trying to, like, pull up rules so quick. Uh, oh yeah, I have, I have it in my Google document. What am I doing? Okay. 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 Yeah, you guys should just run in. Nothing really happening. Uh, but the ship's like deteriorating faster and faster and faster. Uh, and there are people just walking out of, like, you can see people like, banging and hear people just banging on doors to be let out it's like a cacophony of just banging um Mm -hmm. okay um so bang 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 um and you find your way to the top deck Cool. And there are people just all over the top deck in mm. gowns and like formal clothes, all sitting at tables. The top deck has been converted into like a kind of like a gala, like a ballroom. Okay. Uh, and people are just sitting at these tables, dead as shit, decaying. Mm. Um, and uh, <laughs> these people are all dead as shit. I rolled for lifeboat earlier. There is a oh. single lifeboat. Uh, were, were we kind of surrounded by like an eerie fog? You were, and it's still there. Okay. Um, shit, John was like our navigator. Uh, but I mean, there's somebody in the lifeboat, like life jacket on, getting it ready, and it's John. Okay. Well, let's just go over to that lifeboat. Why not? Uh. Captain. No need to uh, lose your head. Hey, I've been waiting for you guys. I sent you some messages on Discord, by the way, Alex. Oh, cool. Cool. I didn't get any, so, yeah. I was about to say, this is, oh, okay, secret. Right. Um, Um, In the boat. Let's uh, get to London. Yeah. Or something. Yes, please. So you're all clambering into the boat, correct? Yep. And John starts just lowering the boat over the side as this ship is starts getting hammered by tentacles. Oof. Just boof, boof. Uh, and as the boat splits in twain. Oh no. Actually, no, it doesn't split, it doesn't split in half. Um, oh. Tentacles kind of wrap around the boat, and something's pulling itself out of the water. And you see this massive... But what if we avert our eyes? Yeah. <laughs> what if we yeah. simply you do can, not you, see? You can avert your eyes, but you can, just, you can feel the displacement of the water. That's like pulling to itself out. Like, yeah, I, okay. Sure. Like, John. John got one look at that thing and blew his head off. Yeah, and then you just hear the... And the boat touches, the lifeboat touches the water. Grab the oars and start rowing. Uh, there is yes, one, you literally. Yeah, there's two oars. Okay. And Mar- uh, Elizabeth and Marcel are rowing. Oh, yeah. As <laughs> fast as, like, as... Okay. You drift into the fog. Ah, perfect. None of you can see anything. 
the captain is going to stand at the prow and he's going to be like, you know, it's been a long night. But for us, it's going to get even longer and he's going to smash their heads together. Okay. Uh, okay. Is that like a surprise attack? So it's an auto hit? No. Uh, this is a little different. Who are you? Who's you like? Who are you attacking first, technically? My first attack would be to Marcel, and it would be to throw him into Florence, or throw him into Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Okay. So Marcel and Alex, I need opposed power rolls, and Alex, I'll send you the details of what you're rolling real quick. Oh, okay. Cool. Um. Just give me a sec. Give me a second. I'm looking up something real quick in the book. No, I want. Nope, that's not what I want. Oh my god. Sorry, everyone. There's so much. It took me to the wrong page. Um, um, no. Yes, that's what I want. Boop, 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 boop. Sorry. Um, well, I feel very confident about my power roll. <laughs> Do you? I yeah, got a so just, one. Oh, shit. So, John, you just roll a, just roll D100. That's all. New dice! 43. 43. Marcel resists, and you look at John, and he's completely transparent. Uh, and as you drift through the fog, Elizabeth is transparent as well. Uh, and Elizabeth, there's like a little flashback a bit mm-hmm. to the deck of the ship. Yep. With the tentacle room. I got strangled to death in that room, didn't I? Yeah. Here's as much. And <sighs> as this little lifeboat starts to drift away, John and Elizabeth disappear. John and Elizabeth, you guys are back on the ship, wandering its halls with Florence, Aww. hoping... I'm praying that other people come to the ship so you can possess them and free yourselves of it. Marcel, you're in the middle of the ocean in a lifeboat sure am. by yourself, trying to find your way to shore with this cube on your person. Cthulhu cube. I have been calling it in my head. Uh, and I guess since you all left the ship, uh, that's where we're gonna end it. Shit. Oh, so let's see. In this game, I've died twice. How many times? Exactly. How many times has Alex ate it by now? Uh, <laughs> Including descent into Avernus. Bunch. And I love it every time. <laughs> oh, boy. Kill me more. Oh, oh boy. I mean, that was a super short session. It was only if an hour we and a half, had kept fighting, honestly, I would have killed your ghost. I'm, I'm satisfied. That's exactly the way a, a game of Cthulhu should end. I'm just drifting into the fog. Marcel's also definitely probably not making it to shore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mar. I honestly, my first reaction was going to be to just smash a hole in the middle of the lifeboat. Why not? That would yeah. Been, yeah, definitely. That would have been so cool. Then I could have fucking used my swim skill. <laughs> I have a 40 in swim. Oh, yeah, man. for about an hour before hypothermia sets in. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, because it's set. This is January. It's right. So it's cold as fuck out there. So much yeah. gonna freeze to death. We're we're Savannah Ace. We're not meant to be um, in the cold. I mean, 
probably just have him like smoking all of the cocaine cigarettes oh, and having like, oh, imaginary <laughs> conversations with his dead friends and oh, like my God. Just OD on the boat. You're, yeah. You're the that one Finnish soldier that just inhaled all the platoon's methamphetamines and went ape shit on the Russians. Oh man. But yeah, uh, honestly, yeah, there's stuff on the ship that could have reversed everything, save the people who died. That were in other rooms, but mm-hmm. y'all want to leave. <laughs> y'all That's true. Up. Fuck it. We're done. We did. Peace. <laughs> we're just like, we are done with this bullshit. <laughs> the boat is sinking. Yeah. Oh boy. That was fun though. That was fun. Uh li- little a little sad that we didn't see Florence become queen, but yeah. Who knows? Perhaps. An- another Windsor gets on the ship and Royal Florence Navy possesses rescue. them and then yeah. when like Florence is like rivals in something in like royalty oh that's man funny as hell. but yeah oh. sh- short session because that's how it goes with narrative stuff it has risen um, yeah the ship's still out there floating around with John Elizabeth and Florence I didn't get to this part because uh, I forgot. I just I totally forgot to mention it. <laughs> uh, do you guys remember when, after Elizabeth died, you all kind of restarted on the gangplank? Yeah. Those of you who mm-hmm. died in the ship are stuck in that cycle. Oh. Without, oh, no. without, hence John running up with a shotgun. Uh, hence, yeah. So Florence, John, and Elizabeth have no memory of Marcel because Marcel didn't die on the ship. Right. Uh, so the three of you are just constantly in a cycle of gangplank, investigating, and dying in other gruesome manners. Until you guys learn your ghosts and find people to possess. That checks. So yeah. That checks for a Cthulhu game. Just a big old, just a big old loop. Yeah. So that's about would you, right. Would you rather die off the ship like Marcel or? <laughs> Hell yeah! I want to be in my cocaine lifeboat. Just yeah, like yeah, like just like okay, od just kind of floating away. Yeah. Um, Maybe yeah. try to like point myself vaguely in the direction of London. I don't know how the ocean works. And just all, all, I, all I think of now is John trying to take over the ship and ghost pirate. Ghost it, pirate ship. Now I'm thinking cool. of Marcel hopping on the cocaine cigarettes and suddenly the Popeye music starts playing. But yeah, that's the end of Call of Cthulhu, the Nightmare Society. Uh would have went longer, but you know, just how things go. Um we'll be back here in a few weeks with something else, I hope. Uh don't know what it's gonna be. There'll be discussions. Uh, but probably will not be D and D. If it is D and D, it's going to be in a completely different setting that isn't uh, high fantasy. We might do space horror D and D. But or we'll just try a different system that's catered towards space horror. Why not Star Wars space horror? There are Star Wars horror novels that are. That's true. Really There's even uh, I forget was the was it the Black Lotus. Plague or there's there's like a zombie De- yeah, there's force like, plague. There's like the Death Troopers books, and those are all about like a there's like it's like an Empire ship that gets taken over by this virus, and all the stormtroopers are like zombies and like armor. I I actually remember when that first one came out. I got it. It is an amazing book. But uh, we'll, first time for that's fantastic. But yeah, we'll be back here. Uh, with something else, uh, with a new face, uh, obviously, as we are going to be casting again. Um, but it will not be Call of Cthulhu. It will not be D&D. It will be something entirely different. Uh, don't know when that's going to be, though. Uh, so until then, good night, everybody. I hope you enjoyed Cthulhu as much as I did running it. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> hope you enjoyed watching it die. <laughs> Except Marcel. Um, not yet. It's a zombie yet.
him dying later. Join us, Marcel. No, I want the sweet release. I don't want to be caught in a cycle. Yeah. I just want to, like, not exist anymore. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, oh, no, wait. No, 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 no. Gaze gets sent to super hell now. That's, 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 that's the right. New... Yeah. 1920s, yeah. That's unless the, you, uh... unless you no, burn at the Ritz. No, that's just a Castile joke. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, that became canon and the internet oh, that's lost its right. Shit. Yeah. That's right. Ooh, that's yeah. Not an alley, right? They had better plans <laughs> and then COVID was just like, you can't bring in. Anyways, you can't bring anyone back. Anyway. Um, so good night, everybody. Uh, we're back here in a few weeks with something different. Who knows what it's going to be? Good night. Bye. Bye.